إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد بيده, بيده الخير يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفوته وخيرته من خلقه أرسله ربه على حين فترة من الرسل وانقطاع من السبل فهدى من الضلالة وأرشد من الغي وبصر من العمى وترك أمته على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزير عنها إلا هالك اللهم اجزه خير ما جزيت نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا في زمرته وتحت لوائه مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير لهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون All praises due to Allah the creator, the sustainer the, of this whole universe and beyond. All praise is due to Allah who has given us the greatest gifts in the form of his final message, the Quran, and his final messenger, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a gift to humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown his favor over the believers by sending to them a messenger from amongst themselves. And this Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the task from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ to convey the, 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 the signs and the verses of the Qur'an and the revelation in the form of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And to purify us, to purify those who follow and believe him. And to teach, to teach us the book of Allah and the wisdom which most of the scholars would, would agree that it is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi There is a white Range Rover that must move. 07J3700. Please do move it immediately. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was honored with so many beautiful descriptions in the Quran. And the one that is probably the most comprehensive in why, in describing why the Prophet ﷺ was sent to humanity is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We've only sent you, O Muhammad ﷺ, we've only sent you as a mercy to the entire creation. العالمين. And you can include in this, in this term, العالمين, the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself was the embodiment of mercy. He was, he was living he, amongst the, his followers as an example and like I said, an embodiment of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him in another, in another place that it is with the mercy that was given unto you 
from Allah, you became soft and you, you became merciful and you became gentle with them. And if you were a person with a harsh and hardened heart, they would have spread away, they would have scattered away from, they would not have come close to you. And we feel this mercy until this day. We are living. We're living in the mercy that was exemplified by the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet ﷺ was chosen to go, or he went and joined his, his Lord, Allah, Rasul ﷺ is no longer with us, with his body. He's not physically here. But his, but we inherited this message. He is with us. He is, he is, he is living with us in, in the form of his seerah and his sunnah and his impact on, on these, these so many generations of believers from the time that he lived on this earth until now. And we are the inheritors. We, are the, we inherited this mercy. And it is uh, our mission in this life is to spread mercy and peace amongst the or through the entire creation as it is meant to be because again our rasul sallallahu was rahmatan lil alameen we are we claim to be the followers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and therefore we should be also rahmatan lil alameen with our own limited capacity we should do whatever we can in order to convey this mercy and peace when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the Prophet Rahmah, He did not just say Rahmah lil mu'mineen, even though in another ayah it's Rahmatan lil ladhina amanu minkum. This, of course, we are the first beneficiaries of this, this Rahmah. But He said Rahmatan lil alameen. Everyone, everyone benefits from this mercy. Those who believe in the Prophet sallallahu as a messenger of God and those who don't. Because the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will do their best, are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do their best to make this world a world where there is more mercy and more peace and more compassion. And therefore everyone, regardless of, of their faith, everyone benefits from this. The scholars have written volumes in how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy to everything, a mercy to for the plants, for the for the for the environment, for the entire planet. Because if we follow the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and we follow the maqasid, the objectives of the Sharia of Muhammad ﷺ, we will be the first ones to care about the environment, to care about protecting this planet, to care about wise use of resources so that the future generations will come and find plenty of resources as we and not to to destroy like now the the humanity when it when it deviated from the mercy of muhammad sallallahu it is destroying the planet destroying the the resources it's destroying the everything that keeps us as the khalifa as the appointee of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in on this earth and our job is to restore that mercy. It is not an easy job, it is not a small job, but it's our mandate. So my brothers and sisters, when we think of our deen, our religion, our way of life as a source of mercy, we think of it as a source of mercy for all of, for, for everyone. So, as followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa each and every one of us. Now I'm not talking about, you know, big or, or global things. I'm talking very specifically, very individually to each and every one of us. Each one of us should participate in spreading this mercy and this peace through the entire world with our own limited capacity as individuals. Even those among us who call themselves, you know, we are, Allah, we, we are muqassiroon. Yani, ana, ana, ana muqassir fi haqqi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not really doing what I'm supposed to do. But even, even those who consider themselves not to be, you know, so 
quote unquote practicing Muslims. Each and every one of us, no exception, we have to participate in spreading this mercy. Because after all, we are all muqassiru. We are all not doing what should, what, what is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where do I get this from? I mean, everyone, everyone should be doing more. No exception. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked about people who, people entering Jannah, do they earn, do they earn it with their deeds? And he said, no, we enter Jannah because of the deeds, but with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, even you, Messenger of Allah, he said, yes, even, even myself. Illa an yatagamadani Allahu bi rahmatih. My hope is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow his mercy on me. So that's the Prophet said. So all of us are muqassirun. All of us are, are not doing what we or, or doing the maximum that we could do or that will be equal to the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is so generous. Allah is so merciful. When, they, when, the, when the believers enter Jannah and when they when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals himself to them, what will be their reaction as mentioned in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu They would say, subhanak. They will, they will say, inshallah we, inshallah all of us will be there. Inshallah all of us will be there when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re reveals himself to the believers. And they will say, subhanaka ma'abadnaka haqqa ibadatak. Subhanak, be glorified. We did not worship you as much as you deserve. So it's all the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't, don't let shaitan play tricks on you saying, you know, I'm not really doing, I'm not very practicing, I'm not an observant Muslim. So maybe I should work on myself first and so on. And, and, and then I think of helping others. That's, that's a trick of shaitan. Because no matter how... No matter how we think we are, how far we think we are from the path, we need to benefit others. And I know you've heard so many times about the stories of, 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 a, of a prostitute whose, whose heart got softened by witnessing a dog that is thirsty and about to die of thirst. And she went down in the well and got some water and gave to the dog to, to drink. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her and, and, and granted her jinnah. We, we hear this. And the man who was also who was in the desert found a, a thirsty dog, went down there in the well and brought, him some, brought the dog some water and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. My dear brothers and sisters, we as our beloved Sheikh Abdul Fattah Muru last, last week reminded us here, that we, we, we do not... We do not enter Jannah by just by these, these very cold type of calculations. You, had, you have many, so many hasanat and so many sayyat and so on and so forth. Yes, Allah is generous and Allah counts the sayyat only once and counts the hasan on the, on the other hand as ten. But in the end, we do not know what will save us on the day of judgment. It could have been two rak'ahs in the middle of the night. It could be a... A plate of food that I gave a homeless person on the street. It could be a dollar, you know, not even a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand. It could be a dollar that I took from my pocket when I had only two dollars or even only that one dollar and donated for some good cause or gave to someone to benefit from. So let's not make excuses. Let's not allow shaitan to play the tricks on us and say, but we, we are not good enough. No, by, by virtue of being a, a, a son of Adam or a daughter of, of Adam, by virtue of being the follower of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you are worth it and you, are, you, you, are, you definitely are you know, uh, um, eligible for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many opportunities for us to do so, to spread peace and spread mercy. We live in a place, you know, the richest country of the world, the biggest economy and so on. But there's so much poverty around us. There's so many places that we can contribute. 
We live in areas where there is so many underprivileged kids that need someone to, to, to help them. Maybe help them in form of tutoring, help them in form of, of, of volunteering some of their time to spend with them just for guidance, just for, for building friendship with, you know, the big brother, big sister kind of programs or the tutoring programs or the youth activities, the youth centers, no matter who is running it. It doesn't have to be something run by the masjid or by, by an Islamic organization. It could be run by a church or it could be run by a civic organization, by whomever. We need to go out and make ourselves actively the source of mercy and the source of, of, of peace in this world. So my dear brothers and sisters, each and every one of us, now I'm talking about the individual level, each and every one of us should find his or her own niche, if you will. Allah has given us so many gifts. He has given some of us the gift of wealth. And the best thing to do with this is to use this wealth in order to help others. Allah has given us the gift of of, of intellect or the gift of compassion or the gift of physical strength. You know, there are people who go and participate in building houses for the, the low income, like Habitat for Humanity and, and other, other projects. Anything. And the Prophet Sallallahu when he was asked on different occasions, people come to the Prophet and say, what is the best thing that I could do? And the answer was, depending on what this the situation of this person it could be to spend in the cause of Allah it could be to go back and take care of one's parents it could be to 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 to, to physically get involved in defending defending the deen and defending the the, the 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 homeland and so on it could be anything depending on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Allah has given us so many gifts each and every one of us should leave this khutbah thinking, what can I do? What can I do best? What is the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me to, in order to share with us? As some of the, the ulama, some of the mashayikh, they teach us, you know, zakah. Zakah is not only part of wealth that you, that's the, that's the, 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 the shari definition or the fiqhi definition of the zakah is zakah of, of wealth. But everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, He expects us to pay its zakah. If Allah has given us a lot of time, by alhamdulillah not having to work, you know, 15, 15 18 hours a day, we are, we are well off and we have time, then this time also, you need to pay the zakah of this time by spending part of it. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us intellect, then that's what we need. We need to go and help others and help others and speak and, and spread the message. So each and every one of us should think, what, is, what, has Allah, what has Allah given me so that I can give its zakah to the people around me? And those people around me, it doesn't matter whether they are Muslim or not Muslim. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith that is reported by a number of, of in a number of books of Tabarani and others that our Rasul Sallallahu said that he is not a believer. Meaning that he is not a follower, a true follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who goes to bed with a full stomach while his neighbor is hungry and he knows about him. He is not a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's serious. That is really serious. He's not a good Muslim who goes knowing that his neighbor, his neighbor needs help and he doesn't help him. Regardless, regardless of whether this neighbor is a believer or a non-believer, even if this neighbor is, 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 is the worst enemy, then if that neighbor is in need, then it's, a, it's an obligation to help. Because that, inshallah, might, might soften his heart. You, you push back and you give that which is best, so that may be the one who is currently your enemy, he becomes your close friends. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, guide our hearts, guide our deeds to follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in spreading this mercy and spreading this peace around us.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. My dear brothers and sisters, so we're talking about the individual. What can we do individually? And if I may request the sisters, please, I see a lot of movement. I don't know exactly what's happening back there. This is khutbah. We are supposed to be listening. Al-akhawat, law samahtu, ayy haga btaamiluha al-an lazim tatawqafu anha halan wa tastamu ala al-khutbah. Yemma tatruku al-masjid wa tkallamu barra. Jazakum Allah khair. Ayyan kanat al-zuroof. Arguukum, inshallah. Ahtaram al-khutbah, ahtaram salat al-jum'ah, hadhi faridah. Talama, jiktum ila al-masjid, الله سبحانه وتعالى لم يفترض على كنا الصلاة الجمعة لحكمة ولكن إذا جئتم إذا جئتنا إلى المسجد فعليكم كل أو على كنا كل مع الرجال من الأدب أدب الصلاة أرجوكم جزاكم الله خير. My dear brothers and sisters, the duty is also upon our organizations. Organizationally here we must be strong. We must support our and strengthen our, our community. We must strengthen our center. Alhamdulillah, this, this center has a, a brilliant reputation in the entire country, mashallah, because of, because of you, because of what you have done, because of what you have contributed, because of what you have accomplished. And we should continue to strengthen our center. And we should support its expansion. Because the, the opportunity to to reach more and more people from the, 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 the neighboring cities and from the places around us is, is what we really need to do. This is what we need to capture, to capture this opportunity. The opportunity to spread the mercy of the Prophet by so many different means. You know, I would like to see the new center come, come to, to be a reality, inshallah, and we have the youth focus and so on, but Another area of focus that is as important is focus on community service. You know, this center, this center should have open doors and the center, the new center for those people who want to come. For example, first come, first serve, no questions asked, a certain amount of food distributed every week. I don't know if this is happening already, but if it's not, that becomes a top priority for us. When we have the new center, inshallah, we can have tutoring centers. The people come and tutor kids in math, in, in science, in, in, in language, and whatever, regardless of their faith, people from the neighborhood, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. We need to start doing this. And finally, I'm going to close with this. This call to be involved and engaged in the community around us, and this is not... Please do not think of it as a reaction of what's of the current circumstances. It's not like something that we do for a PR, public relations, or just to look good. No, this is an essential, this is an integral part of the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our beloved Prophet, helped the people in Mecca regardless of their faith. When, the, when the, the man came to him and, and, and complained to him when he was being persecuted and the Muslims were weak, and the man came to him and say, Abu Jahl is, is denying me my rights, he's not paying me what the, 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 pri or the, the, the money for something he bought from me. Our Rasul Sallallahu did not say, oh, I don't need this now. I don't need this problem. I have enough problems with the mushrikeen. You want to put me in trouble with Abu Jahl now? He did not say that. Hasha. He did not say, you know, my brother, I know I feel your pain, but there's not much I can do. He immediately left his place in the Kaaba and went with the man and went and knocked on the door of Abu Jahl and Abu Jahl started shaking and trembling, afraid, you know. After all this, and Muhammad Sallallahu is coming so boldly and so courageously and saying, give this man his right. And he immediately gave the man, he immediately paid the man. And Prophet Muhammad, he's our example. You say Muslims are weak, we, we have to stand up for the poor. We have to stand up for the underprivileged. We have to stand up for the oppressed. When we say, when Muslims talk about joining or when, when we are called as Muslims, to join movements to defend the rights, for example, Black Lives Matter or other movements that actually stand up for the oppressed. 
We should not say, oh brother, we have, you know, we have a trouble of our own. No, this is our duty. Kuntum khaira ummah, because other, otherwise we, don't know, we are no longer khaira ummah, we're no longer the best people. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'amuruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'aminuna billah. This is the, the reason for being the best community ever brought out to mankind is that we enjoin what is good and we start to stop what is wrong and what is evil. Regardless of whether we are a minority, we're a majority, we're weak, we're strong, we're poor, we're rich, it doesn't matter. We have to do our part, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, guide us, guide our hearts, guide our limbs, guide our deeds to be in compliance with his teachings and the teachings of his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our hearts and to to make us the source of mercy for those first to, to give us peace ourselves and to make us a source of peace and mercy for those who are living around us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our community and keep it cohesive and strong and give it even more strength in order to be able to please him better, in order to be able to spread the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the light of Islam around us and in order to help the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We serve you, Allah, by helping your creation. We, we, we serve you, ya Allah, by following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who stood up for the poor, who stood up for the, the oppressed, who stood up for the underprivileged. And we hope that we are, inshallah, worthy of calling ourselves the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ghafir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat, al muslimina wal muslimat. الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء همنا وغمنا اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار يا رب العالمين على الوجه الذي يرضيك عنا اللهم ارفع مقتك وغضبك عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارفع الظلم عن المظلومين وارفع اللهم ارفع الطغيان اللهم واهزم الطغاة المعتدين يا رب العالمين وخذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر فإنهم لا يعجزونك يا أرحم الراحمين أباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعم يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر